Hi, welcome here. My name is Mr. Jansen. I teach band at Clear Spring Middle School. And my job today is to take you through a little bit of the Google Slides and the Google Forms that you'll be using to uh, give us your preferences and your choices for next year in grade seven. So um, we are right now at the Google Slides. Um, if you hit present, then we can go through this together a little bit. Um, there's various links in this presentation that uh, would normally give audio. I'm not going to click on any of those links uh, because the audio isn't going to come through properly in this video. Plus, it just would end up taking more time. Um, so, here we go. There are a few branchings that happen for grade seven. Um, one is that you can pick between band and art. Um, inside of band, you have a choice between three different instrument families and seven different instruments. And just to give you an idea, in grade eight, we add a couple more instruments. We go from seven to 13. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, jazz band is also one of the things that is inside of band. Uh, typically though, the students that find the most success in jazz band have already had some experience on their instrument about a year. Um, now, if you choose band, there's going to be two concerts at school a year, a trip to Winnipeg for festival and an optional overnight trip. Um, there are fundraisers to help with the cost of the overnight trip. Inside of art, uh, for grade seven, uh, you have a choice between visual art, drama, photography and coding. And then just so that you know, in grade eight, those choices change slightly. You have visual art, drama, digital art and animation. Now. My hope is that all of you will come along with me as I take you through the rest of these forms. But if you already know that you want to take art, you might want to skip to those slides. And this timestamp here will tell you where to skip to in this video for me talking about the arts. All right. OK, so choosing band. There are three instrument families, brass, woodwind, and percussion. These are some of those instruments. That's uh, flute, clarinet, trombone, trumpet. Uh, this picture could be a euphonium or a tuba, depending on the size of the picture, because a euphonium is pretty much just a shrunken down tuba. So woodwind family. Um, in grade seven band, we only use flute and clarinet. Uh, they there is some experiences from recorder that make these two instruments a little bit easier. Also that these two instruments tend to be in treble clef. So you can go ahead and click on these links to hear some flute and some clarinet. This is actually a clarinet quartet. So there's a bass clarinet happening in here. I usually try to add bass clarinet towards the end of grade seven and definitely in grade eight, we try to add in some bass clarinet. So then that way you have an idea of what the sound is. Brass, uh, in grade seven, we have trombone, trumpet. See, I've done the sizing thing. This would be a tuba, this would be a euphonium. Um, these three all use bass clef for their music. Most of elementary music is in treble clef. So the way that you name the notes changes a little bit uh, from grade six to grade seven, if you're on these three instruments. So trumpet would end up, if you wanna click on there and find out what trumpet sounds like, some trombone, some euphonium and some tuba. Percussion is a bit of a different beast. <laughs> uh, so, Percussion, they have a pile of different instruments to be taking care of and learning to play. Um, so I try to have dedicated percussionists, um, not only in terms of that they are dedicated to learning their instruments, but also they are dedicated in that they are gonna be a full-time percussionist throughout the year. There are some other programs that they might switch back and forth between a wind instrument and a percussion instrument. I try to keep people just on percussion. Um, 
So some of the things that I'm looking for and that you might be looking for are if you have some piano experience, because we have keyboard instruments, we have mallet instruments, um, and also uh, people who have played the piano usually have read multiple lines of music at once, and that really helps the percussionists to know what's going on. It's not a requirement that they have piano experience, but I find that percussion is a challenge for some people. And ultimately my goal is to match it up so that students can have success and they can be challenged. The trick is that sometimes the challenge is too great and we don't like that. That causes way more stress and problems than we want. So trying to match that up with people is the trick. So those are some of the tuned percussion, the mallets. Um, on your left, you have a xylophone. On your right, you have what's called orchestra bells. Sometimes people call it a glockenspiel. This is more percussion. You have triangle, suspended cymbal, bass drum, snare drum, crash cymbal, kabasa, all kinds of goodies. And there's more stuff back there that I could list off. So these are some examples of what some of these things sound like when you play them, so that then you have an idea if that's something you would like to do. Uh, top right here, the snare drum, the drum line uh, shows you a little bit of the precision that we end up looking for um, from percussionists. Okay. Um, this page shows you a little bit of how many of each we'd be looking for. There are 45 instruments on this page. Um, if we had 45 people choose band, then I would be looking to have eight flutes, 12 clarinets, 10 trumpets, six trombones, three tubas, three euphoniums, and three percussionists. Um, just that then you have an idea of why I might be trying to shuffle people in certain directions. Um, I typically, in the past, have been looking for more flute players. Um, so for example, if I had 45 people in the band, I would usually end up with like for people wanting flute as their first choice. And so then people who have flute as their second choice, I usually start trying to shuffle them over into here, provided that doesn't cause huge issues. Um, tuba and euphonium. This is one of the other reasons why tuba, euphonium, and percussion, I tried to pick carefully for who is on those, because if you only have three tuba players, um, that's only three people on that part. That means that somebody there has to be on it. If you have 12 clarinets, if you didn't practice last night, and so you don't know your part, you can hopefully, hopefully one of the 11 did practice. And so they have the part and they have the piece of the puzzle there. So that then you can also learn off of them. It's more difficult to learn off of people when your pool of people is smaller. Trombone is another one that sometimes I need to shuffle people over onto, but each year is a little bit unique. Um, obviously, if we have more people picking band, then more people would be on these instruments, and then sometimes it gets a little bit easier. Um, I would say maximum I would go to is likely five percussionists. I try to keep it to three. Uh, tuba and euphonium, usually my max is three for each. Again, these are some videos so that then you can hear what it all sounds like when we put it together, because that's ultimately what band is about. Um, band is sort of a big team sport, um, and it, it's all about playing it together and taking this puzzle piece and putting it together with that puzzle piece and getting some neat stuff happening. Choosing an instrument, um, there's three main criteria that I like to hold when we are choosing instruments. One is um, the student choice. Uh, it gets a whole lot easier for a student to practice if they are enjoying their instrument, which is also tails in with hopefully if I can make some good judgments in terms of matching people up with an instrument that matches them and matches in terms of difficulty and challenge. Um, 
The other thing that I keep in mind is the band instrumentation. We need it to be balanced. And you saw that a little bit on the previous slide. Finding an instrument. Um, so when your pre preferences are all in, I'm going to attempt to place everybody on instruments. I'll email you those placements by the end of May um, so that you, then you can go about finding an instrument. Uh, if you already have an instrument and if you have that instrument, boom, done, great. If you don't, uh, one of the options is to rent from the school. Our rental for trumpet, trombone, flute, clarinet, uh, euphonium, tuba, percussion, all of it is $150 for the year, $15 a month. Now, when you go to a music store, likely you'll find that their rental fees are higher. Part of that is because most of our instruments have been used and are well used. Um, the other thing is that we are usually trying to help out families that otherwise cost might be an issue. The second way to get an instrument is to go and rent or buy one from a music store. Long McQuaid, St. John's Music, West Music, and Hildebrand Music. I've got links there so you can go and take a look at what they have to offer you. Um, you can also go to Virage Sale, Kijiji, or other second-hand options. Um, buyer beware. Uh, if you want my opinions on some stuff, if you want to know some of the things that I look for when I'm looking second-hand, um, send me an email. Send me links to what you're looking at. Um, yeah, because ultimately, if you're, if there's good instruments in the room, it means that there's less repairs that need to happen, and it makes my job easier because then they can learn faster and they enjoy learning more. Um, so please use me as a resource as you're trying to find that. Okay. It's always tricky here because band is not, band can be expensive. Um, at CMS, we don't want the costs to get in the way of students having the experiences that they deserve. You deserve to be in band if you want to be in band. So please let us know if there's any way that we can help you out. Um, yeah. If you choose art, there are four choices. We would like you to choose your top three, and then we're gonna be looking for ways to meet your choices as best we can. Visual art, this is some of the stuff that you would be doing in visual art. Um, and this might be a good time for me to remind you that no matter what you pick in grade seven, um, there will be elements that you need to practice because really all of these arts require skills and skills, you just have to practice them. So I know that Miss Massey sometimes has people learning how to draw circles and lines and straight lines and all of that. And so she has uh, daily homework for you to be doing with practicing drawing. Photography. Um, this photography course does kind of dovetail with digital photography in grade eight, um, but you can you can take digital photography in grade eight without having taken photography in grade seven. Um, digital art in grade eight, um, because you're making some pinhole cameras and exploring some of where photography has come from in the last couple of years. It has changed a lot. Drama. Uh, so drama is, of course, where you do different drama games. Um, you start looking at some different kinds of scripts, um, things like that. Coding. Uh, the coding course is a newer course. It was offered for the first time last year. Um, so Mrs. Rogalski teaches coding and she's doing some pretty interesting things here in terms of how do you build this stuff. Costs. Um, obviously you can see that band does have higher costs than art. Um, I think that we'll have an average price 
in here by the time you see this slide. Um, some supplies that I'm aware of that do need to be purchased are usually like a sketchbook or some different colored pencils, things like that. Um, if I remember right, uh, for visual art, you should also have an apron, um, things like that. The band side, um, if you're renting from the school, $150 a year. Um, if you have your own, of course, that's there's, there's the only cost there would be maintenance. Um, then there's an optional overnight trip. Uh, two years ago, we went to the International Music Camp. We were going to go to Campus Santa Boya um, this year. So we don't have a good number for what that would cost us, but that's where we would be thinking of going next year. Um, finally, we do understand that band is more expensive, but if cost is the limiting factor, please talk to Mr. Neufeld or Mr. Jansen so then we can help you out. So hopefully you're ready to fill up that form now. If you have questions, uh, general types of questions, you can email cms at hsd.ca. If you have band questions, please email me. If you have art questions, you can email Mrs. Massey. Uh, Mrs. Massey will make sure that they get to who they need to get to. So then you can click on this link and let's see if it'll take me there. When the link loads, it should, yes, take you back to, you may have actually started out here. Um, and now you can go ahead and fill it in. We would like your email address and your child's name. It just helps us in our lists to make sure that we've got responses from everybody and who we should be talking to if we don't have a response from them. Um, yeah, this selection will take you to the appropriate chunk on the form so that then if you click in band it should take you to the band part if you click in art it should take you to the art parts so that then you don't have to do both if you have any questions or if you've noticed some mistakes please email me at tjansen at hsd.ca otherwise stay safe take care